In this video, I'm going to talk about X-Plane Data Refs. What X-Plane Data Refs allow you to do is send information from X-Plane to some other third-party uh, application or plugin that will read that information and do whatever to it. It also allows that third-party application to send information to X-Plane to do whatever it does uh, with it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just show how X-Plane communicates with Air Manager. What Air Manager is, is a software application that allows you to build custom cockpits. So say, for example, if the plane speeds up, the airspeed indicator in Air Manager is going to show dynamically that plane is speeding up. And the way it works is X-Plane data refs, you subscribe to one of them in Air Manager, and it's going to uh, constantly read that data ref. And so X-Plane will be sending the data ref to Air Manager. Air Manager will read it, display the information, and then, um, you know, appropriately show it. So let's just kind of start from that perspective. So we have a plane here in X-Plane and the plane is accelerating. Well what it's doing is it's going to send the data ref information for the airspeed to Air Manager. Air Manager is going to display that airspeed on some sort of gauge. Now that's known as a one-way or readable only uh, pattern where really Air Manager is just going to receive a signal but it's not going to be sending anything back because it doesn't really need to change anything. And so X-Plane is going to be sending a read-only data ref to Air Manager. Air Manager will display it, and that's going to be the end of it. The other type of data ref that X-Plane uses is what's known as a readable and writable data ref. And so what happens is X-Plane will send information to Air Manager, and Air Manager will do something with that information. Say, for example, we have a light switch here. So um, X-Plane is going to send a signal to Air Manager saying that that switch is off. Inside of Air Manager, we're going to turn that switch on, and it's going to actually write back to that data ref saying, this switch has been turned on. And then what X-Plane will do is that it will actually do whatever that switch is supposed to turn on. So say if it's the lights, it will turn the airplane lights on. And then as far as X-Plane is concerned, those airplane lights have been turned on. Say, for example, X-Plane starts that plane up with the lights already on, then it would send a signal to Air Manager saying, hey, these lights are on. Air Manager would then flip the switch to be on, and it would then, of course, send the signal back saying the switch is on. It wouldn't really need to send that signal back because Air Manager did initiate the uh, click, but it's just a good looping system that um, they've written into it so that the X-Plane, the plane, will be in sync with whatever switches are in Air Manager. And again, Air Manager is kind of like a game changer in the way you can do custom cockpits because it's, it can be very customizable. But in order to be able to use Air Manager and to really enjoy it and to get the full benefit out of it, you really do need to understand this X-Plane data ref stuff. And I have to admit at first, even for me, I was kind of like, what's this data ref stuff? But actually, it's very, very simple. And... Um, a way to find data refs is you can go to uh, the Sim Innovations uh, page, and I will provide a link to that uh, in this video and also on the blog. And what this does is it allows you to look for uh, a data ref. So say, for example, I have a battery. I want to find something in battery, and I search for that. Well, here I have all the data refs that deal with batteries. Now, some of them are just turning a battery on and turning a battery off. Uh, others of them are uh, other things to do with the battery. But it's a really nice way of looking for them. So if I just want to find out if I want to be able to turn my battery on or off or not, well, here right here is uh, battery on, and this one's an integer. And then we also have this battery array on with an int 8. Well, all this is meaning is if I just have one battery, this one would be fine to use. If I have more than one battery, then I want to do something like with this one. And I will be showing you how to work with uh, something like this in a future video. So this isn't really too scary. This is just known as an array uh, of integers. Now, this data ref is writable, which it would need to be, because we need to be able to tell uh, X-Plane if something was turned on or not. Um, it takes what's known as a Boolean, which is nothing more than a true-false indicator. So it's either on or it's off. It's really pretty simple. And most of these come with a description, like it has right here. So it's, again, um, really easy. They did a great job with the site because it's uh, very easy to find the data refs you need. Of course, you have the type. You have writable units. I didn't need, need to add any of that. I just put in battery, and I, and I got it back. Um, the problem with this particular site, and it's nothing to do with sim innovations. By the way, just so you know, Sim Innovations is a company that has created Air Manager. But no fault of Sim Innovations, they you know they only had the data refs up to 11.31. Uh, 
uh, which was updated in January. Now this video is being done in March, so that's not really so bad. That's perfectly fine. Um, but if a if an aircraft builder has custom data refs, because the aircraft builders can write their own data refs, there's no way that Sim Innovations is going to have any idea about that. And that's one of the. It's not their fault. It's just a flaw of this particular site. So if I was to say, look at the Bell 407, go B 407, and I search for that, you can see I get nothing. And even if I try to say come back and I look for you know Bell, just a parcel search, you know, search for that, it doesn't find anything. So I can't find anything for the Bell 407 helicopter, which is built by Dreamfoil Creations. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over into the um, Office Sim cockpit, and I'm going to show you how we can actually get those data refs from the Bell directly off of the Bell. So we'll be back in just a second. So here we are in the Bell 407 helicopter. We're looking at the top panel. And what I want to do is I'm going to use this little data ref editor, which is in plugins, data ref editor right here, show data refs. And that's going to bring up this screen. Now, I will give information for where you can find this plugin. And the one of the authors of the plugin, uh, Ben Supnick, did an excellent video showing you how this thing works completely. So I'm just going to kind of give you a brief uh, because I really want to tie it into the bell. Um, but I will provide that information uh, with this video and also in the blog. But you can see I have all these data refs here, and I want to kind of find the one for the battery, which is this battery switch down here. So if I come in here and I just type in battery, now it is case sensitive, so you know, i got to check for upper and lower case. In this case, it's lower case. And you can see I have all the battery um, data refs here, same ones that I just saw on that Sim Innovations website. And if I turn the battery on, you can see that it's set to one. See how that's one right here? Um, we also have uh, on, run right there. So pretty much either one of these will work. And of course, they turn it off, they turn to zero. So zero means off, one means on. So this array one that I talked about, this basically can do up to eight batteries. But because this helicopter only has one battery, it's only showing for this one. So if I turn the battery on, it turns to a one right there. And if I turn it off, then it turns back to a zero. So that's actually pretty nice. But we could get that information from the Sim Innovations website. What's really nice about this little plugin is if I put in for the uh, B407, which is capital B407, you can see that I get all the B407 uh, commands here. And so now I can get on the custom commands for just the, the bell. And if I kind of scroll down here a little bit, um, I think it's in the overhead. I think he has an overhead. There it is, overhead switch. And we have boost XFR left right there. That switch right there, which happens to be this switch right here. So if I switch this on, it turns it on. See right there, turn to a one. Now this is what's known as a float. So it's a, it's a decimal, one point, and then whatever. In this case, it's just going to be one. But then I, I hit here, and you can see it turns off to a zero. So this is one of the custom ones that's just for the bell. It doesn't exist anywhere else in X-Plane, so you can't find it on Sim Innovations. But by using this plugin, you can find it. And basically what you do is you just kind of look for XFR uh, or something like that and hopefully try to bring that up. I can try with the XFR and see if I get anything with it. Uh, XFR and capitals. Yep, sure enough, there it is. And so I can really narrow it down to exactly what I'm looking for. You just got to kind of make sure you have the case sensitivity right. And then, of course, if I turn it on, it turns on, turn it off, it turns off. So I can control this switch through uh, Air Manager communicating with the data refs. And I can uh, turn the switch on in Air Manager and have it actually turn on here, which in my Bell 407 custom cockpit, that's exactly what I've done because that's one of the switches I need to start the helicopter up. But this is a, a, just a really simple example showing you how this uh, data ref editor works and how you can find the exact data refs for what you're looking for. Again, uh, I will supply links to um, where the video is, which is much longer than this one, where Ben Supnick really gets into this particular plugin. But I'm just trying to kind of show you how data refs work and a nice way to find them. So that's going to conclude uh, this video on data refs.